The first thing you do when you get your distill light is wash it with warm, soapy water and rinse it off. In the factory, we have dust and stuff around and you'd like to start off with the cleanest system possible. Now for the pot that I'm going to be boiling the water in, I'm just using one of our pots from home. Just a simple stock pot. I cleaned it fairly well. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. That's going to have the boiling water in it. And I'm going to throw some salt in there. I just did a TDS reading so you can see that. And uh, I'll show, throw some salt in there so you can get an idea of how well these work. We'll get it stirred up really nicely. And then I'll show you another TDS. Our original TDS was around 550-ish, and that's just coming out of our well here at the uh, homestead. So uh, I'll get this stirred up and then show you a TDS. Okay, so it's flashing 10 times. So now we're at 6,600. 7,400-ish. So it's still getting dissolved in there. But uh, you can see the little thing flashing 10 times what the reading is there. So that shows you. All right, this is the water we're going to be boiling. I stirred it up pretty good, but you can still see some salt not dissolved in there. So let's go ahead and get our burner going. We're going to run it on high until this boils. The reason you want to boil it without anything on it at first is that uh, we want to boil off any volatile organic chemicals. They boil at a lower temperature and will boil off first so they can't condense into our collection. All right, you may have noticed that I moved the pot from that burner to this burner. Uh, I just didn't realize when I started it that I couldn't reach the countertop, <laughs> so that's why I moved it. It's beginning to boil, and uh, this is actually some water that we made last night uh, using our larger Gravistil, which is the same design, just it auto-fills the boiling chamber. But uh, this takes a little while to boil, just simply because we have so much water in this pot. But just be patient, keep it on high, and I'll check back in a second when it's uh, rolling. All right, it's boiling pretty good. Uh, if you're using uh, well water or, or you know city water that you're distilling, you don't necessarily have to worry too much about volatile organic compounds. Uh, VOCs is what you'll see listed. But uh, always use safety when you're dealing with hot water. So we're gonna go ahead and take our distiller, set it right up here, and you can already see the steam is starting to come up. A little hole on the top. So now we'll take our pot of cool water, which is right here, and I'm going to set that on top of this gasket to see. All right, now I set my pot of cool water on top. Now this pot is technically a little too small, 10 inches or larger. So I have another pot here that I just put some water in. You could do something like this or a large bowl. So uh, we can actually start seeing steam that was coming out of there a moment ago, but we'll get back here and get our collection underneath it. You'll notice anytime you put cold item <clears throat> on top of a hot item, this will focus, you can see the condensation. So don't worry about it if there's a little bit of condensation that runs down onto this. You'll see it around the edges. It's just anything going from hot to cold will condense. Just like a uh, cold Pepsi can on a hot summer day. Or beer, if you like. Another uh, error that, that people typically use with this is that they don't keep their burner on high. Um, it, you know, distillation is an energy intensive process. You have to boil the water to make it a vapor, for it to rise into here, to condense in that little condenser section, and then run out this you know, tube here. So, until the water comes down again, there it goes. 
So, um, so if you don't run it on high, you're not going to evaporate the water in there, and then you have no chance of condensing it here. So running it on high for usually the first half hour, 45 minutes is normal. And then you can back off as this top pot starts warming up, which the heat is being transferred into that pot. Uh, once that starts warming up, then you can back down the burner a little bit to find a, you know, a, a happy medium where the unit will continue to run and you'll get evaporative cooling in the top pot. And then you just continue adding cool water to this pot until you run out, almost run out of water down there and then you'll have to refill it. Alright, so water protection has begun. You see steam coming out as well. That is completely normal. And it'll just start filling up this bowl here. Now, I'm using two stainless steel pots. Um, this is just an El Cheapo pot I think I got years ago from Wally World. Uh, this is our cooking pot at home. You can see my reflection in there. I should not move back. <laughs> and uh, our distillers are all 304 stainless steel, so uh, as long as you clean them regularly, they will perform for years and years. This uh, stainless steel tube here can be bent. You can see I have it straight out. Um, you can, once it's cooled off, uh, take your knee to it and bend it so you can have some more uh, movement with where you want the output to be. I just left it straight for now. You can use these on natural gas stoves, obviously. Electric stoves, induction stoves, provided you have a pot that is induction ready. If you don't, uh, we have little devices that are induction plates that you just simply throw inside the pot. And uh, that allows you to run it on uh, induction cooktops very easily. Uh, but the best is just to have a pot. These are actually induction pots as well. And then you can run them on propane or even wood stoves, provided the wood stove will provide enough heat for you to boil uh, briskly. It will still work uh, much slower if you can't boil the water uh, quickly enough, but uh, you know, just like anything, you, the more energy you pump into it, the more production you get. So, uh, all right, well, I was running around checking on uh, the yard, cleaning up some sticks, and uh, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like with like different pans on it. So I switched out uh, the pot that I had over here and put this little flat one on there just so you can see different pots and how it fits and seals on the little gasket. Here's our water that we've been making. Uh, it's just about an hour now. I'll go check on my watch and see. Uh, but anyway, and I'll show you another pot here in a second. I'll put a bowl on top of it just to show you what it looks like. Really, I'm not cooking anything. People ask sometimes, uh, can I just change out this water while it's running? Yes, of course you can. Just take precautions. I use, uh, you know, dirt oven mitts here to pick it up and swap it out. You know, with 71% of our planet covered in water, uh, water is not the issue. Uh, we have a lot of water. We just don't have a lot of drinkable water. So. By doing this, you could literally use any, any water source and uh, you know, be able to output your drinking water as you see here. Yeah, another thing you're going to have to check is to make sure you don't run out of water in the lower boiling uh, pot versus the condensing pot, we call that. So boiling pot, condensing pot, collector is how it works. But um, anyway, yeah, I just added some more water to it. We were getting down there a little bit um, and uh, filled this back up. So we'll be making water again. All right, well, I've just about run it enough for today. You can see the water. I'm going to transfer it into this glass container and cool it off. Uh, so that we can actually get a TDS reading on it. But uh, somebody else asked, uh, and I'm trying to think of questions that people ask, like, well, if you're refreshing this water, 
with cooler water, what do you do with the hot water? Well, I just put it in a bowl, you know, like that. And then I use that bowl to fill the boiling pot again. So it's already preheated. So you're just kind of exchanging it as you go. Um, that's the same principle that our Gravistil works on. It automatically fills the boiling chamber from the preheated condenser water. But uh, you can look that up. Uh, you can find it here on Amazon, Gravistil with a hyphen. So G-R-A-V-I-STILL. And uh, you can see this system still making water. You know, so, you know, these distillers are not the fastest water producers. But if you compare this to an electric distiller, let's take a, uh, there's some on Amazon that are electric, 1500 watts. Uh, they produce about one gallon of water in four to five hours. Well, we're already sitting at probably a gallon of water. I will throw it in this glass container here in a minute so we can actually see. Um, I only have a little two cup, uh, two cup measuring cup here, so I can't really. Uh, well, I guess I could count them out for you, but anyway, you'll see how much water is produced. But um, with these electric distillers, they take you know four or five hours. Um, they will heat up your kitchen just like we're doing now, so there's no difference there. Um, and then secondly, they um, they're sealed systems, so volatile organic chemicals. Uh, will be trapped in the system unlike ours is an open system. You see a little bit of steam coming off of there as the water is being produced. Well, those can contain contaminants that will just go up in evaporation. Um, so when you're you know, using a sealed container like on an electric distiller, those are going to be recondensed into the water where when you have volatile organic chemicals or compounds that boil at 170 degrees, well, they're not going into my water so much. Uh, they are going right into the air. Now, you may say, well, what about your air? But you can open a window or run these outside. So anyway, um, this is uh, just an overview of how the distill light works. We haven't made a video uh, about this product in about seven or eight years. But, um, you know, here it is operating and making water. So. Uh, uh, distilled water. So I'll cool this down. Uh, the TDS meter doesn't like uh, hot water. You'll notice that if you ever measure it. But once we cool this water down and uh, do a measurement, uh, we're hoping to see a very, very low number. Even though we started off with 7,400 parts per million on the TDS, which is outrageously high. That's almost seawater, I believe. So anyway, We'll um, show you the measurements here in a little bit. The after effects of uh, running the distiller. You can see all the grime and everything that's been left behind. These are perfectly clean and clean water. All right, and we're back. Uh, the water is cooled off now. Here's the container that. Uh, I emptied the bowl in two, so you get an idea. This is a gallon and a half container, so we may just add a gallon of water. Uh, it took about an hour and 40 minutes, give or take, for this. And I did switch the water uh, on the condenser quite a few times, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. So let me uh, get some water out of here, and uh, we'll do a test. Okay, so I just took it out of there into the cup. We'll turn on the TDS meter. Now remember we started with 7400 on the TDS because I added all the salt to it. And we are at, oh, it's hard to see on that, five parts per million, five to six parts per million. So I'll give you an idea. A uh, reverse osmosis will give you about 50 parts per million. So we're about as clear and clean of water as you can possibly get from something really, really salty and dirty. So anyway, hope you liked the video. 
Um, if you have any questions, you could obviously reach us at the shop. Um, our contact information is both on Amazon and on our website and uh, many others. So uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to hearing from you.